Well, hey everyone, Lisa Tamati here at Pushing the Limits and welcome into my YouTube channel. Uh, today, I want to do a session on enhancing brain health with cutting edge therapies and supplements and peptides and things that you can do to optimize your brain health. But this is also a really important uh, episode for people who are dealing with cognitive decline, whether it's Alzheimer's or traumatic brain injuries, concussions, uh, any of the neurological diseases really it's all about helping your brain be the best that it can be so welcome in and if you haven't been to my channel before this is all about longevity biohacking the latest and greatest in optimizing your health and helping you stay healthy in prevention of disease rather than reactivity so that's what we're all about here at the channel so enhancing brain health with cutting edge therapies so we are facing an avalanche at the moment of uh, things like Alzheimer's disease. We have an aging population worldwide and the statistics are pretty damn scary when it comes to uh, the, the tidal wave of cognitive decline that we're going to be facing and what that means for society. And I've done many, many podcasts on this. I've interviewed people like Dr. Dale Bredesen and Dr. Diane Goodenow and Dr. Elizabeth Yurth and many, many others uh, on different aspects of how we can deal with brain health. And I have a very personal connection to this because I have a mother who had a massive aneurysm and stroke nine years ago and was left with massive brain injury. So I've spent the last nine years sort of working out how do we optimize brains? How do we bring them back when they're being damaged? What can we do? And I want to take you through um, some of the latest in scientific advancements from things like exogenous ketones, which we can take as a drink, um, to things like hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And we'll explore how various treatments and supplements can enhance cognitive function and overall br uh, brain health. So let's dive right in. So let's first talk about exogenous ketones, one of my favorite topics at the moment. Now, these are supplements that provide your body with ketones. Now, you would have also heard of the keto diet which you can do. And I highly encourage that if you've got a brain injury that you look into the keto diet, it's not for everybody, but it can be very beneficial for people with brain injuries. And the reason is, is that ketones are a fab fabulous alternative energy molecule for the body to produce uh, energy. Um, so they are not, they, they do the produce, uh, ketones produce energy. And when you have low carbohydrate intake, you can get your body to produce its own ketones, but not everybody can do the keto diet and not everybody is suited to the keto diet. And then we have medications that can sometimes interfere with your body's ability to take uh, or make your own ketones. So I like the idea of taking exogenous ketones. So these are ones that we can buy and supplement and take as a drink form. Um, so exogenous ketones can cross the blood brain barrier and they can provide an immediate energy source for the brain cells. And these ketones such as beta hydroxybutyrate, there's ketone salts, there's ketone esters, there's many varieties can enhance mental clarity, improve focus and support cognitive function by providing a readily available fuel for the brain cells, reducing the reliance on glucose and potentially lowering inflammation. And I've done whole episodes with the likes of Dr. Dom Diagostino on my podcast, Pushing the Limits, and Jeffrey Wu of HBNN, and Dr. Elizabeth Hewitt and Richard Smith, uh, all on ketone. So I will link to some of those episodes below in the uh, show notes. But uh, if you want to do a deep dive into ketones, that's where you should look. Um, and let's look at how they actually function and their potential anti-inflammatory effects. And this is where it gets really interesting. So it is an alternative energy source. So after a brain injury, glucose metabolism can be impaired, leading to energy deficits. And this is really crucial for you to understand. So if you've had a concussion, a stroke, a brain injury, you do not want to be taking glucose because that is going to actually exacerbate the problem. What you want to be doing is getting ketones to the brain so that it has its alternative fuel source. And it doesn't use the same uh, um, transporter into the cells to get the energy in as glucose. It uses a different one. So this, this other way of getting energy in is not impaired when you have a brain injury. And ketones provide an alternative energy source, bypassing the need for glucose and supplying the brain with the energy it needs to maintain function and support the healing process. So for anyone who's going through a brain injury, look at doing that. It reduces inflammation 
and uh, been shown to possess anti-inflammatory properties and they can inhibit the activation of something called the NLRP3 inflammasome and that is upregulated in brain injuries and in many diseases actually so this is something that you really want to uh, pay attention to it's a protein complex involved in the inflammatory response and by reducing inflammation ketones help mitigate secondary damage and support recovery in the injured brain it offers neuroprotection so ketones exert neuroprotective effects by reducing oxidative stress and protecting neurons from damage and this is particularly important in the aftermath of brain injuries where the oxidative stress can exacerbate neuronal damage. So really, in that acute phase, this is something to be aware of, but also further down the line, it can be helpful. It also helps with an enhanced mitochondrial function. So mitochondria, the little energy powerhouses of our cell that make the ATP, and these can be compromised as well after a brain injury. And ketones can help enhance mitochondrial function and efficiency and improve overall cellular energy energy production and supporting brain cell survival. Uh, it helps with the promotion of brain plasticity. So ketones may also help with that, it's, um, the, which is the brain, the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections. And this is crucial for recovery after a brain injury as it helps the brain adapt and compensate to damaged areas. It also helps with the reduction of excitotoxicity. Now, excitotoxicity is caused by excessive stimulation of neurons by neurotransmitters like glutamate and can occur after a brain injury. So you get excessive amounts of glutamate, which causes the neurotransmitters, basically they start firing crazily and to the point where they get damaged or they can die even. So ketones can help reduce excitotoxicity by stabilizing neuronal activity and preventing excessive neurotransmitter release. It also helps improve cerebral blood flow. So some studies suggest that ketones can improve the blood flow, which is vital for delivering nutrients and oxygen to the injured brain tissue and supporting the healing process. So I've used ketones with my mum's recovery on and off over the years as they've become available and the different, I've tried many, many different types. I have one at the moment called Kinetic that I'm very excited about. And I've seen a massive um, difference. Like when the times that she is on ketones to the time when she's not on ketones, it's like night and day. It's like her brain turns on for a few hours and it's really giving the brain that energy to come back and to be herself. Now my mum has had... Uh, not only the aneurysm and the stroke, but she also had brain cancer and brain surgery where they removed the tumors. And she's also had many UTIs, which attack the brain and E. coli infections and a hip operation and you name it, she's been through everything. And this means that she's had brain injury after brain injury. And things like surgery are a brain injury. They cause a brain injury of sorts. And uh, even... Um, uh, environmental toxins and molds and things like this can also cause, uh, uh, so it's not just a traumatic injury or a stroke, okay? So think about ketones in relation to that, and I'm a huge fan of taking exogenous ketones as well as perhaps trying the keto diet. Now, the keto diet's good for some people, not so much for others, so you have to try that one out. The next on the list that I want to make you aware of is actually a peptide called dihexa. And this is a small peptide that's known for its neurogenic and neurotrophic properties. So dihexa can cross the blood-brain barrier and bind receptors that promote the growth and differentiation of neurons. And dihexa has been shown to improve cognitive function, enhance memory, and even stimulate the repair of damaged neurons. It works by binding to hepat hepatocyte growth factor, HGF, receptors leading to increased synaptogenesis and neurogenesis now let's explore uh, this a little bit so i've used um, uh, these different peptides again with mum's story i'm going to teach you a little bit about one called cerebellicin coming up and one called uh, clank and cmax and dihexa i haven't tried yet uh, but these are all peptides that you can all look at so if you're dealing with parkinson's multiple sclerosis stroke uh, the aftermath of brain surgeries, traumatic injuries, any of these things, I encourage you to go to do a deep dive into each one of these peptides that I'm going to mention. So the first one there was dihexa. Now let's explore uh, cerebrolysin. And this is a neuropeptide-based uh, medication that mimics the effects of neurotrophic factors. And it's actually a multimodal 
group of peptides and it's comprised of low molecular weight peptides and amino acids. Now, cerebrolysis supports neuronal survival. So if you can get it in the acute phase, say you've just had a stroke or a concussion and you can get it IV, and this is available in countries like Austria and uh, some of the Asian countries. Unfortunately, most of the rest of the world doesn't know about it, even though this is just absolutely uh, an incredible peptide that could be doing so much. But in the hospitals there, if you are presenting with a stroke, this is what you'll get IV. And it helps support neuronal survival, promotes neuroplasticity and improves cognitive function. And it's often used in the treatment of neurodegenerative conditions and trauma, uh, traumatic brain injuries due to its neuroprotective and neurorestorative properties. So I, I'm, I'm, I've used this with my mum and I would have liked to have gotten higher dosages. I had to go to extraordinary lengths to get it out of Austria and I would like to see this spread around the world. It also can help with anxiety and depression. There's a study that's come out in the um, Frontiers of Science magazine for cognitive. Uh, this was in 2022, and it's better than a lot of the drugs that are on the market, and it's just a, a really wonderful brain peptide. Um, it can make people feel more happier and contented, so and people that have anxiety and depression are actually more at risk because these are neuroinflammatory conditions and they are more at risk of developing cognitive decline. So cerebrolysin has all, also been um, investigated for that as well. Um, so yeah, one to really put on your radar, it's by Eva Pharma is the um, company that puts it out, Eva Pharma in Austria. And if you go to their website, um, you will find so many studies, like literally thousands of studies. And a lot of them are human studies, not just animal studies. So it's something that I would like to see right around the world, and especially for people that are, you know, maybe APOE4 that have the genetic tendency towards Alzheimer's. This could be a very great, you know, preventative step strategy. It helps improve the brain's ability to pre repair. Um, it uh, encourages neuronal recovery and neuronal repair. And it's one of the most well-researched out there. So that's cerebrolysin, okay? Now, the next one is C-Link, and this acts on the GABA, ergic, and serotonergic systems, reducing anxiety and improving mood. And while C-Max influences the dopaminergic and serotonergic systems, enhancing focus, it also does memory and learning. So both peptides also exhibit neuroprotective effects. There's another one called uh, C-Max, and I use both C-Lank and C-Max in my mum at the moment. Right now, we're going through a cycle of that. And both of these are very protective and can help enhance uh, your memory and so on. The next thing I want to put on your radar is actually not a peptide. This one is called uh, plasmalogens. And I've done a uh, podcast with Dr. Dayan Goodnow, who is Mr. Plasmalogen. What he doesn't know about plasmalogens isn't worth knowing. And he has different products that are out on the market. One's called uh, uh, Prodrome Glia and Prodrome Neuro. And this is a type of phospholipid that's found in high concentrations in the brain. And they play a really crucial role in protecting brain cells and supporting cellular communication. And plasmalogens help maintain membrane integrity reduce oxidative stress and support neurogenesis and supplementing with plasmalogens may help mitigate uh, age-related decline cognitive decline and support overall brain health now plasmalogens do a hell of a lot more than that as well dr dayan has written a book called breaking alzheimer's and this is all about the plasmalogen story and how it relates to uh the plasmalogens um and then he has done webinars on autism. He has done ones on cancer. And basically, these are we produce a lot of them. These are produced in the cell, in the peroxisome. And when we have a virus or we have some sort of insult, we use up our plasmalogens. They're basically sacrificed. They're like the, 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 the water from the fire truck that's putting out the fire. And afterwards, if your lake isn't refilled with plasmalogens, then you can run low and then you're going to have these problems. So people who have high levels of plasmalogens, in fact, there was a study that came out um, that a 65-year-old with low plasmalogens and a 95-year-old with high plasmalogens have the same 
uh, mortality risk factors. In other words, it gives you back 30 years of uh, uh, of lowering your risk for dying of all causes. So I've probably butchered that and I'll try and find the actual study to put in the show notes. But basically what it's saying is that the plasmalogens are absolutely crucial if you want to live a long time with a healthy brain and a healthy body. I use these constantly of mum uh, and if she has any sort of insult we do high doses for a while and then we go back down they are quite expensive so we we do have to cycle up and down I would like her to have um, these at much higher levels for much longer but put on your radar if you have especially if you have Alzheimer's or any of those neurocognitive Parkinson's multiple sclerosis anything like that the next thing I want to talk about is something that's also very near and dear to my heart and I actually run a clinic um, it's, a, it's a hyperbaric oxygen therapy so I run a clinic here in uh, Taranaki which involves breathing near pure oxygen in a pressurized environment which increases oxygen levels in the blood and the tissues and hyperbaric enhances brain health by promoting neurogenesis reducing inflammation and improving blood flow. It's used to treat traumatic brain injuries, stroke and other neurological conditions by accelerating the healing process and improving cognitive function. And how it works for brain health. So it enhances oxygen delivery by increasing the oxygen levels in the blood. Hyperbaric ensures that oxygen reaches damaged or inflamed brain tissues, promoting healing and recovery. It reduces inflammation, has anti-inflammatory effects that can help reduce swelling and pressure in the brain, which is crucial after injury. Neuroprotection, the increased oxygen levels help protect brain cells from further damage, promoting cell survival and reducing apoptosis or cell death. Neurogenesis and angiogenesis, so hyperbaric can stimulate the growth of new neurons, which is the neurogenesis, and the formation of new blood vessels, which is the angiogenesis, aiding in the repair and the regeneration of brain tissues. Now, hyperbaric is specific for brain injuries, so great for strokes. A stroke occurs when you have a blood supply to um, part of the brain is interrupted, leading to oxygen deprivation and brain cell death. And hyperbaric can play a critical role in the recovery. I know this all only too well. Again, going back to my mum's story, originally I found out about hyperbaric oxygen because my mum was left not much over a vegetative state, massive brain injuries after aneurysm and stroke. And we were told to put it into an institution and she would never have any quality of life again. I've written a book about her recovery recovery and the cornerstone of that recovery was hyperbaric oxygen therapy it wasn't the only thing we did it was many other things like I've listed above um, but it was absolutely crucial um, so it improves the oxygen supply to the affected brain regions and reduces inflammation and swelling promotes the repair and regeneration of damaged brain tissues enhances neuroplasticity and the brain's ability to reorganize and form new neural connections it's good for aneurysm as, as I, <laughs> I found out um, an aneurysm is when you have a weakened area in the wall of a blood vessel that can lead to a hemorrhagic stroke if it bursts and while hyperbaric is unfortunately not used as first line. It's really, really powerful. And I've written a book about this. It's called Relentless, How a Mother and Daughter Defied the Odds. And I'd love you to go and check it out. That's over on my website at lisatarmody.com under the shop, and you can see all my books there. Um, so it re also reduces the risk of further brain damage when you do hyperbaric due to the um, – so when you have the oxygen deprivation from a stroke or aneurysm, it can really um, help with that. Um, great with traumatic brain injuries from external forces such as falls or car accidents or sports injuries. And they can lay, lead to a range of cognitive, physical and emotional symptoms. And hyperbaric has been um, shown to be useful in TBI treatment, reducing the cerebral edema, the swelling of the brain, enhancing oxygen delivery to the injured brain tissues, promoting the regeneration of brain cells and blood vessels, improving cognitive and functional outcomes in TBI patients. Also for non-traumatic brain injuries, uh, such as those caused by toxins or a lack of oxygen, hypoxia, I know all about that one, having raced many times ultramarathons at uh, extreme altitudes and um, ending up with hypoxic brain concussions, uh, I know um, how beneficial that's been for me personally. 
Um, it can deliver high levels of oxygen to hypoxic brain tissues. And in fact, um, when we were up in the Himalayas, they would um, sometimes in the mountaineer expeditions, they um, have hyperbaric chambers that they actually carry out for people who get uh, altitude sickness because it can be life-saving in those such situations. Um, it reduces inflammation and promotes tissue repair, supports the overall recovery of brain function. And there are several studies and clinical trials that have demonstrated the efic efficacy of hyperbaric in treating brain injuries. Um, for example, was one published in the journal Stroke found that hyperbaric significantly improved neurological function in stroke patients. Research in neurosurgery showed that HBOT reduced mortality and improved outcomes in patients with severe TBIs. And a cl clinical trial in the undersea and hyperbaric medicine reported that HBOT or hyperbaric enhanced cognitive function and the quality of life in patients with chronic traumatic brain injury. So to conclude, hyperbaric therapy offers a really promising approach to treating various brain injuries from strokes to aneurysms to TBIs to non-traumatic brain injuries by enhancing oxygen delivery, reducing inflammation and promoting neurogenesis. And hyperbaric can significantly improve the recovery outcomes and the quality of life. And I can really attest to that. Having a, 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 a clinic, I see the outcomes of it. Um, and there are like literally thousands and thousands of studies you just have to go out there look up dr shai efrati out of israel and some of the cool stuff that they're doing and some of the latest research that's come out of there now i want to switch gears and talk about photobiomodulation for brain health and this is a therapy that uses red and near infrared light to stimulate cellular function so photobiomodulation penetrates deep into the brain tissues enhancing mitochondrial function reducing oxidative stress and promoting neuroprotection. And it shows promise in treating neurodegenerative diseases, traumatic brain injuries, and enhancing cognitive performances. And I've done podcasts on this with Dr. Marvin Berman, who is an expert, and he has helped develop a, a device called the Neuradiant 1070. Uh, and I interviewed Liam from Neuronic. And I've also interviewed Dr. Lou Lim, who is another luminary in the space of photobiomodulation. So I encourage you to go and check those out. I'll put the links in, in the show notes to those episodes and um, I've again used this I've used the 810 I think it is 810 one from Dr. Lou Lim's Violite company and I'm about to get the new Radiant 1070 and I'll be doing a report on that once we've had it for a little while and tested it out. Um, and by understanding and utilizing these advanced therapies and supplements, you can significantly enhance brain health and cognitive function. You know, it's not when you get a when you get a diagnosis for something like Alzheimer's, I often see people they come to me in the clinic and it's like, oh, there's nothing we can do. And there's nothing further from the truth. There are so many things that we have that can do it from I haven't mentioned diet. Of course, a diet is hugely um, impactful and you want to be on a low carb, no processed food, cut the sugar, good fats. You want good fish oils, good uh, quality olive oils, all of those sorts of things to feed the brain. Your brain is like 70% fat. So you need to have good levels. You don't want to have super low cholesterol levels either. And that's a subject for another day to go into and in depth. But yeah, it, it, there is just so many things that we can do. And I'd really you know, encourage you to listen to the episode that I did with Dr. Dale Bredesen, where he talks about the 36 holes in the roof when you're dealing with cognitive decline and Alzheimer's. And, and this goes for other things as well. It's not ever going to be a one drug thing that fixes it all. You have to address the lifestyle. You have to address the exercise. Exercise is a huge component. You have to address hormone optimization. And on that point, I really want to make you aware of the work of Dr. Mark Gordon. So I'm hoping to have him on the podcast shortly and Dr. Mark really uses um, hormones to help optimize brain function and help with recovery after brain injury and he uses everything from growth hormone to testosterone and estrogens and the sex hormones as well as looking at cortisol and thyroid and um, has developed his own systems and protocols and approaches for that so I really highly recommend that you go and check out everything that Dr. Mark Gordon does he's just absolutely fabulous so this is by no means an exhaustive list of what we can use to heal our brains there is just so many I haven't even touched on the supplements you know like the curcumins and the um, you know many many others fish oils and uh, yeah, just just so many on the supplement front but it will give you a bit of an insight into things like yeah, there 
there are peptides, there is hyperbaric, there is red light therapy, there is ketones, there is getting rid of the things that are causing ongoing issues in your body. There is looking at things like your microbiome, doing functional medicine testing, working out where are your issues. Perhaps you have some gut issues that are contributing to the problem. Perhaps you have leaky guts that's adding inflammation. Perhaps your immune system's not working properly. So when I'm working with someone, I try to do a workup as much as uh, funds will allow for testing to find out where is the health of this person at from a fundamental level, where has their brain injury come from. Uh, and when I'm asking people about brain injuries, they I, you know, often ask people, you know, have you had a brain injury? And they'll say, no, no, I haven't had a brain injury. And then you go, have you, are you sure you haven't had a brain injury? And then they're like, oh, well, when I was three, I fell off a swing and cracked my head open. And I was taken to the hospital. Well, that's a brain injury. And this is, the, this is the other thing. Brain injuries are cumulative. When you get more than one and they add up over time, and it, it is a myth to think that a brain injury that is where you weren't knocked out is not a not a serious brain injury. That is not the case whatsoever. It does not require that you are knocked out for it to be a serious injury. And even things like doing roller coaster rides uh, or anything that that puts centrifugal force can damage things like the structures of the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus that can be stretched and the shearing forces. Um, so all of these things can have an, an impact. So you need to really go through and then you need to look at all the things that can cause um, toxic damage in the body that can affect your brain, right? Or even viruses we're seeing in COVID and long COVID, a lot of people with brain fog. What is that? That is a problem in the brain. It's an injury to the brain. It's inflammation in the brain. So all of these things could be contributing to some of the issues that you have. So list, go back and list all the brain injuries that you've had. If you're dealing with cognitive issues, if you're dealing with cognitive decline and be proactive, don't wait until you've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's because by then you're really pushing the proverbial uphill. I hope this episode has been uh, enlightening for you and giving you food for thought. It's by no means extensive and, 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 you know, giving you everything, but I will put some of the links to the show notes to some of the podcasts that I've done that are deep dives into various aspects of what I've talked about. And I hope that you will subscribe to this channel for more great, uh, you know, content. I interview people all the time and check out my podcast. Also, if you're on YouTube, check out the podcast and go to lisatarmody.com as well. And I really thank you for your time and intention and look forward to bringing you more content soon. Thanks team.